Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? I am joined with a very, very special guest that I'm not talking about, Sawar Ahmed. He is very special. But we're talking about Sheikh Abdul Hakim Idris, who is the Inspector General of the World Uyghur Congress. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you. Wallahi, it's a pleasure to have you. It's a, re it's a real pleasure to have you. Finally, I mean, we, you know, Sabur has said some really amazing things about you. And we know the work that you're doing in terms of the activism and indeed the academia. I mean, this is a book of yours, isn't it? Yes, I'm very honored uh, to have this opportunity, especially my uh, from my uh, brothers and sister in faith, my my own religion, uh, talking about their brothers and sister and the voiceless people right now in concentration camp in China, where they uh, have to denounce their religion, the copy of Qurans were burned, the mosque turned in the uh, bars, and. Uh, yeah, to see Islam religion as a illness, backwardness, and uh, they want to, the Chinese Communist regime want to rewrite the Quran, openly telling uh, Chinese version of Islam. And in this time, uh, to have you now in your show like your brother, and it's very honor just for me like uh, who has uh, doesn't know uh, if uh, my father, mother or my sisters and the brother alive or not, almost four years. Yeah, I'm not only know. one, I'm one of the hundreds, uh, uh, thousands of Uyghur people around the world in diaspora. Uh, we go in the bed, you know, without knowing, knowing our loved one is still alive or not, our uh, sister is raped or not, uh, our children, you know, raising in atheist system. And in these circumstances, uh, we in diaspora, so we were people left alone, and uh, uh, we need, you know, like a like a t talk like this, and that did give us, you know, hope, and uh, uh, I'm very uh, happy uh, be with you. Thank you. Well, what you just said there really struck a chord in my heart because it was something. I mean, Sabora, we've heard this before with Dr. Burhan, haven't we? I know it's just so painful to hear. It's so it makes me. Like, the emotions it stirs within me when someone says this to me is, you feel sad, you feel sorry, but then you feel so angry as well, don't you? Just knowing mm. that there are people out there that are responsible for this kind of thing. Yeah. You know, I want to ask you a little bit more about your story, uh, Sheikh Abdul Hakim. Um, tell us, you've just said something, like I've never heard from that many human beings in the world. Even in the worst, most affected areas in the world, and I've been to bad areas, most of badly affected areas. I've been to Cox's Bazaar, seen the the Rohingya. I've seen people in Sub-Saharan Africa. I've seen people in the Middle East. I've seen, people, but n many people don't. Not many people have the same kind of thing that they can tell me that they don't know where their family are still alive or not. When was the last time you spoke to your parents? Last time I uh, spoke uh, my mom, uh, 25th April 2017. Uh, I have an open letter to my mom, end of this book. And uh, uh, you know, uh, what uh, every day uh, if I pray, what uh, for a dua I do? I, I tell you know, Allahumma arham amwatana wa ahya'ana. Without knowing if my parents. Uh, Which uh, means, may Allah g w w bless. Have mercy on our living and our dead. Yes. If they're dead, Allah bless them. If they're alive, Allah bless them. That is the pray right now, you know, that as we were Muslim, uh, we are doing uh, right now. And I want to tell uh, one simple story. The Chinese uh, communist regime, if they put a person in concentration camp, this now because I interviewed some campus survivor for this book. They put in the Before jail. Before continue, this is a book that you can get online. Yes, uh, it's in uh, Amazon. It's uh, called Menace by Ma Abdul Hakim Idris. Yes, get on Amazon. Yes, Amazon. Okay, that is a Kindle version too, and the, uh, the, you can download worldwide. And the day, uh, if they put in the jail first time, they tell them, you know, they will tell them, you are here. Nobody know you are here. Your relatives don't know you are here. Even your God doesn't know you are here. No. If he knows, he should come pick you up. This is, this is 
This this attack is this <laughs> they, they attack have is, no idea wallahi. Th- yeah. They have no idea how that word will come yeah, back to th- haunt them. Th- th- they have no idea how that word will come back to haunt them. That very word. Yes. It's it's, it's comical that their the atheism leads to them to this kind of foolishness. Yes. And sorry sorry to interrupt you but I have to make a comment about this really. It shows you for those individuals who say that atheism, materialism, all these kinds of things have nothing to do with on the ground stuff. Mm. These guys are attacking religion on on atheistic grounds. Your God, does, what, what have you got to? Why is he bringing theology into this? Yeah, absolutely. And as you'll find in his book, the concentration camp absolutely. survivors give a detailed account of what happens. One of the uh, survivors, uh, sister Zumra Dawood, who uh, I interviewed previously as well. She said, on the first day when you're there, they teach you that there is no Allah. Like, that's part of their curriculum. Why are they, why are they so angry about the theology? Uh, uh, well, I, I just wanted to... Sorry, sorry, Sheila. They have built these camps. They've built these concrete prisons. They have spent millions of pounds and they have erected these structures in East Turkestan because the people refuse to give up la ilaha illallah. That's why they exist. Because if the Uyghurs gave up la ilaha illallah, there would be no need for these camps. So these camps exist because the people refuse to give up if, Islam. If you if you look, uh, so uh, we cut you we cut you off. No no yeah. no problem. If you look uh, in, in China, there are uh, 1.4 billion people living in China, and the, the Uyghur Muslim, uh, what the Chinese in their statistic, mm. it's always the lowest. Mm. They say 12 million uh, Uyghur Muslims. Mm. What the Kazakh, Kyrgyz, other Turkic Muslims, maybe we are, we are mm. 15 million Muslims. Mm-hmm. They couldn't uh, eradicate our religion yes. or culture yes. last 17, 70 years. Mm-hmm. We, you know, they, they, th- this is not the first time they burnt uh, a copy of Qur'ans. They burnt a copy of Qur'ans in the, the, the Great Leap Forward in the 60s, Cultural Revolution in the 70s. They, you know, uh, destroyed the mosque at that time. Even look in Kashgar is like a Bukhara or Samarkand, the ancient city in Central Asia, where mm-hmm. the Hanlak Madrasas, you know, mm-hmm. for the theology for Islamic religion, mm-hmm. very famous city. They left there in, in, in seven, end of seventies, two mosques in, in, in Kashgar. But we as a Uyghur Muslim, you know, we get a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit tolerated freedom. We built our mosque. We, you know, get our religion again. Yes. And our religion, Islamic religion, saved us to become kafir or like a Han Chinese atheist. Mm. Imagine, the mm. Islam mm. saved Uyghur people in 1.4 million peoples around. Mm. And th- that's the why, the why, why they are attacking the religion. They say, you know, to assimilate them, to eradicate them, I have to take their belief, their faith. I attack them, their faith, diminish them, you know, and that's the, the, what the attack. Yes. And, and this, is, this is not the, just a war against Uyghur Muslim. That's the war against Islamic belief and okay. faith. The Islamic faith is not just uh, belong to Uyghur Muslim. It's belong to all um, Ummah Islami. Yes. Mm. Quran Kareem is not the book, holy book for the Uyghurs. Mm. It's the book for all Muslims. Right. And the masjid is Masjid Allah, uh, house of Allah. Yes. Mm. If they be turned in the bar, okay, we are just responsible what, what we can do. Mm. For this is every Muslim mm. believer is responsible, mm. stand mm. against this war and faith. Yeah. Yes. War against Islam. Yes. You know, yes. this is something very important. The Chinese uh, Communist Party says, this is an internal matter. We say anybody that says la ilaha illallah and you oppress them, this is not an internal matter. This is a matter that goes and reaches the entire Muslim world. So they want us to give up and say, oh, here's the border. So these people are being oppressed. Don't worry about them. But if you look at what they're attacking, they're not attacking hmm. them just being Uyghur. Hmm. They're attacking them because they believe in la ilaha illallah. Now, Sheikh Idris uh, spoke about, you know, the destruction of the mosque, the desecration of the Quran. All of these things, the rapes that happen in these concentration camps, yes. the separation of children, hundreds of thousands of children separated from their parents. Mm. But here's something I just want everybody to uh, picture. They would put their filthy communist flag above the name of Allah. Mm. And they would allow the world to watch that. So if you watch the mosque, 
uh, in uh, Eid, the Eidgar Mosque that you have in um, uh, Kashgar. This mosque, it had Bismillah Rahman and Rahim at the front. This is a few years ago and you find many, many Muslims praying there. Now they've removed the name of Allah and they've stuck their filthy flag on top of the masjid. And everybody around the world sees that atheism is above Allah. From, from their perspective, that they believe that this is the way forward. And we say Allahu Akbar, Allah is above atheism, yes. Allah is above communism, Allah is above the Chinese Communist Party. So their message is clear. It is, we are at war with Islam. That is their message. Yes. And in the other masjids, you find the actual picture of Xi Jinping. You actually find his picture. Yeah, now we right. know the pictures are not allowed in these masjids. We know that you're not allowed to have these images in mosques. And they've put his picture in the direction of the Kaaba. And even in some places, they have made their own Chinese Communist Party's Azan. They've actually made their own uh, sort of thing about the, mother, the motherland and this and this. Muslims on Eid have to yeah. listen to the national anthem, which is full of obviously communist ideology. So as Sheikh Idris is saying, this is not an internal matter. Anybody who says La ilaha illallah, this should make your blood boil yeah. and make you understand this is our responsibility. I want to ask a question. Yes. Okay. Going back to your situation here, I, uh, you are the head of the biggest Congress, isn't it? And most the Inspector General. The, the, so sorry, I apologize. You are the Inspector General, okay, of one of the most, if not the most influential, the oldest, for it, sure. It, it is the, yes. it's the actual representative of the Uyghur diaspora. Yes. Right, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So, what can we do on the ground? This is my question to you. What can we do on the ground? Uh, uh, I am the general inspector of the World Uyghur Congress, which is the umbrella organization for the Uyghur people in diaspora. Uh, we, uh, our uh, member, our leadership will elected by the delegation. Mm. Delegation will be elected by the people of East Turkestanis, they living in, in, the, in the diaspora in free countries. We had uh, last month a free election to. Uh, for delegation for the next uh, Congress we have in uh, 12 to November in Prague. Uh, we uh, we are elected freely our delegation. It will be held in the next uh, Congress. Uh, it, it means the World Uyghur Congress is representing the all Uyghur issue mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the, the world, like a uh, like an exile government or representative. So, uh, so this is quite a big thing. Then, big things, it? yes. Yeah. And we have local organization in, in, in the UK and Europe and America and everywhere. And uh, uh, this is uh, like an umbrella organization. Nice. So, for, for your question, what can be done? Yes. Uh, our our uh, problem is not in Western country. In Western country, there will be reports about the uh, Uyghur genocide. Many uh, uh, parliaments, you know, declared it's a uh, Uyghur genocide. And it will be held right now here in the UK, the Uyghur tribunal. Our problem is to reach out our brothers and the sisters in Islamic countries. Mm. We asking them not, you know, fight for us. We asking them just pray for us. Like every Muslim pray for Palestine. Mm. For the every Muslim, you know, depressed everywhere, they praying for them. We want, you know, a part of this Ummah. We are the, for a part of this Ummah. Yes. We want to just, you know, that our brother and the Muslim just pray for us. And we have difficulty to reach out Islamic countries uh, many reasons, uh, maybe you know that, uh, we, have, uh, we have Chinese influence and that and that, but uh, we have still in Islamic countries many institutions, many influential people, imams, scholars. I think we, uh, uh, we should reach to them through uh, the Muslims living in Western country. Mm -hmm. Because in, uh, as a Muslim in Western country, we have luxury to get information, but this luxury make us fard to inform, to inform responsibility to inform our brothers and the sister Islamic countries what's happening there. Yeah. And, if they don't know, yes. we can you know tell them. Look, just in one month, you know, mm. one uh, khutbah of a Friday. You know, uh, talking about the Uyghur issue from just, you know, perspective of Islam as a brotherhood, you know, as a part of a new man. Yeah, well, we had, an, we had um, a protest, as you know, in London. It was probably one of the biggest protests. First of July, yeah. First of July. And it was pretty successful. Yep. We've heard that it, that it has actually made the Chinese government make amendments, even on the ground in 
uh, in China, in, in East Turkestan, they made them, people go to eat prayers and stuff like that. Do you think that activism, protesting and these kinds of things has an impact? And if so, how do you advise us to do this? Yes, uh, uh, almost uh, Chinese government shut down most, almost four years. L last year, nobody uh, go to mosque to pray for the Idol Adha mm. or Al Idol of Fatr Ramadan. Yes. But this time, after uh, uh, first of July, when the, our uh, brothers and sisters in faith Muslims went to front of Chinese embassy in London, Subhanallah. which is like a Chinese foreign ministry for the China, yes. asking them, we are here, we want ask about our, about, about our brothers and sisters in East Turkestan. We are here. Maybe Allah, you know, maybe uh, yeah. there were yeah, thousands, thousand, thousand, yeah. thousand, thousands uh, the, 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 the people attended this demonstration. Yes. Maybe Allah showed them thousands, hundred thousands. Allah. They get, they get scared. <laughs> and then the Radio Free Asia reported yes. the Chinese Communist government forced Uyghur Muslims over 60 years old to go mosque. Allahu Akbar. The, the, the police went to every uh, home, you know, you go mosque. The people are scared. So you're telling me it has a material impact to actually Material change. impact. Allah. Because, because, beca be 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 because, you know, the Chinese communist regime is very afraid about PR, um, public PR, relations. Yeah. Especially yeah. in Muslim countries and the Muslims. Because China's money came first from Muslim countries. Yes. And if they lose the money, mm. if they lose the resource in Muslim countries, they will lose everything. Mm -hmm. And that's the crucial. So and this is working. This is working. We have to say now, and we're going to mention this at the end once again, that we, we are going to organize another protest. And it's going to be on this, was it the 2nd of November? The 12th of Sorry, November. Sorry, 12th of November. Which 12th? is the East Turkestan National Day. Yes. Because in 1933 and in 1944, they had their independence and it was crushed by the Chinese machine, yes. uh, the Chinese communist uh, regime. Yes. And the 12th of November in London and also inshallah in other cities in the world, there's going to be a protest to speak up for the Uyghur people. Now, uh, Sheikh Idris here, he was speaking about obviously the impact of that protest. But I, would just, I just wanted to highlight something. The Chinese Communist Party, mm. you can imagine as a narcissistic dictator. Mm. Narcissism would not allow you to take any criticism. They cannot take any criticism. Mm. And especially if it has to do with money, mm. because it impacts them. So even on social media, tweeting, making videos, talking about it, that has an impact which is tangible. The protest definitely has one. If you're at home, share this video, tell your friends and families about yes. it. Go to your local imam and say, why haven't you spoken about the Uyghur people? Because yeah. I want everybody to remember something. Mm. Turkestan, the land of Turkestan, which is an ancient land of Islam. This land became Muslim over a thousand years ago. Mm. And in this land, we've had, from this land, people who've come to defend the holy lands of Islam, like Sultan Qutuz from Egypt, mm. he was from Turkestan. Oh. Babur from uh, the Mughal Empire, who established the Mughal Empire, he was from Turkestan. Alp Arsalan, who defeated the Romans mm. and actually conquered the Roman Emperor, was from Turkestan. And then, of course, the Ottomans, the Seljuks, and all that. Bieber's. Yeah. Oh. And what we need to understand is Islam has been supported, has been given support mm. from Turkestan mm. for hundreds and hundreds of years. Now they need our help. Now they need our help. Now they need our help. Yeah. And they have been Islam's so, elite troops. So you said something. Yeah. He said something to me, yeah. Sheikh Abdul Hakim, which I think is a very important point, and I want to put it to you as well. Uh, you said something to me, which I think was such a profound point that it should be on the public record. You said, you know, of all of the the causes in the world. You mentioned Palestine. You mentioned the, like the Rohingya. Like there's so many horrible, especially Muslim-related causes, like humanitarian causes. You, you once said something to me which really stuck, you know, which is that the Uyghur cause of all of those causes is potentially one of the most solvable causes. Because, it's, you know, with the Palestine issue, for example, the superpower is against us. The superpower is in bed with Israel. They, and not only is the superpower in bed with Israel, it's, 
it just seems impossible to get the you know the the objective met really unless something dramatic happens absolutely dramatic whereas with this situation here it seems to me that because the powers that be here the superpowers the hegemony the the british not british sorry the, the american hegemony is fair enough in an inter interdependent economic relationship with china because they both need each other economically but at the same time they are in a PR kind of cold proxy war. Yeah. This could actually work. There could be, I believe that if we put enough pressure on China, it doesn't have to be military pressure. It really doesn't. I think economy motivates these people, like you said. Yeah. If it gets bad enough for these people, they will stop doing what they are doing. I genuinely believe yep, yep. that alleviation yep. of this situation can happen with a lot of international pressure. And PR alone, PR with with a robust economic strategy as well, which can be generated from the PR, yeah. can alleviate the situation to a point which is completely indistinguishable from what we see at the moment. Do you think this is a fair representation? Yes, it's a fair representation. And uh, uh, as I uh, said before, you know, uh, the 1st of July impact. Yes. And uh, uh, we are talking right now, uh, uh, again, uh, 12th November, yes. East Turkestan National Day. Because this East Turkestan National Day, if you look back, the, 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 the Islamic Republic of East Turkestan, 1933, you know, Islamiyet, hmm. Adalet, Khuwet, you know, this is the Islamic uh, uh, symbols, symbols. Hmm. and, and uh, uh, establishing this republic there, and this is the day, you know, yep. 12th of November, yes. to go out and just stand, you know, for your brothers and the sisters in the East Turkestan, say, we are here. We are hearing your voice. You have to. Allah sent we us have to do this. here. We this, have is, to this, do this. this is the important. And yes. uh, may I finish this? Yes. Uh, right now uh, we are uh, working uh, for the 12th of November. Mm. Just you know, in the U.S. Uh, and then the Australia, Canada, yes. and Europe, and the, uh, everywhere. Just as as a Muslims, mm. as a Muslims, yeah. as a Ummah, mm. go to the front of Chinese embassy, and ask your brothers and sister and stand for the justice yes. that's the we crucial crucial we do it for every other we do it for palestine yes and, and when you see the numbers for palestine cause this is important yes and palestinian blood is not more valuable than uyghur blood this is a this is a fact and, and also i just wanted to say that you know uh, the sheikh spoke about the 12th of november hmm. and that you know this is an islamic cause this is not some some something that muslims should shy away from East Turkestan was the first Islamic Republic in the history of the world. The first. Before any other Islamic Republics. And even if you look at the, the people, the, the old pictures of who's dead, you will find that there is a lot of Islamic symbolism, a lot of Islamic slogans. Even when, for example, the Uyghurs, when, when they, are, you know, they, they are representing their cause, they will say, Dinam Islam, Militum Uyghur. What in them Shirkia Turkestan, Dushmanim Khatai Tajabus Jirli. I'm not gonna translate <laughs> that. I'm not gonna translate that. Right? Uyghur is better than mine. No. <laughs> I tell you, when I looked at this, I said, this is not a secular slogan. This is not a slogan about, you know, uh, communism. The Uyghurs are Muslim. This is their slogan. They believe in this. And we all know, we all know that in Islam, if we do not help each other, then one by one they will pick up each one. Allah. And this is the thing. You know, uh, Sheikh Haytham, uh, when he was speaking about the Uyghur cause, he narrated a narration of the Prophet and I'm going to paraphrase it, that if we do not help a person, and then they are in a difficult situation, then it could be that Allah puts us in that situation. Because yes. we could have helped him, we did it. So what is to say, the whole Muslim world is silent on this issue. And then, one by one, China does this to each Muslim country. Yes. You know, it's, uh, this is something I heard from one Uyghur activist, and this, wallahi, stuck in my head. East Turkestan is Islam's eastern fortress. If that falls, it's game over. That's your first point of stoppage. And what is it, what's, what's being required? Just activism. And just in the same way that Israel stopped its actions in the recent conflict because of the outcry. Same way, the Chinese, they'll give up. They will give up. They'll give up. Yes. They'll be like, okay, it's not worth it for them. It's, it's not, not worth it for them. It's, by the way, 
what the stakes for Israel are different to the stakes for China. Like, you can imagine China, you know, saying, whatever, it's not worth it for us. Israel are not going to do that. They're not say, we're going to give up our country. This is something they've been fighting for years. Yeah. Uh, for them, it's the different. Yeah, and sorry, just to just to uh, clarify, where we're telling them, don't genocide. Yeah, so even don't rape women. Yeah, so when it comes to Israel Palestine, it's totally different because yes. the Chinese call East Turkestan Xinjiang mm. new territory. They know it's not their territory. Yes. That's why they call it new territory. Two, in their constitution, they recognize it's an autonomous region. So meaning it should have everything except foreign policy, but it doesn't do that. So even the Chinese regime itself it understands. This is not their it's not land. Their land but they well, know it's it. not their land, but what we're saying is at this point in time, there are so many objectives to be met before we're talking about this land being independent. Yeah. We're talking about the genocide being stopped, the, the concentration camps. There's so many things that can be improved. Yes. And it's, it's, it's so many things that can be improved that lower stakes. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So I, I just feel like this is something we, we must like partake in. And it will be, I think, almost a form of discrimination, I must say. If we if we we show so much support to Palestine and Palestinian cause, which okay, fine, it's a holy land, it's extremely important, but we show minimal support to the Uyghur people. I just wanted to say something that Muhammad Hadib, he's he's one of the volunteers for the Uyghur Human uh, Uyghur Freedom Organization. He, you know, he agrees with this, even though he's Palestinian. Mm. He said if the Palestinians were sent over to East Turkestan. So if the East Turkestanis were sent over to live in Gaza, to live in these places, right, to go under the oppression that the currently the Palestinians are going through, the East Turkestanis would consider this a holiday. The oppression in East Turkestan is so severe that if they went to Palestine, they would say, Alhamdulillah, this is all right. Not to trivialize, of course. No, absolutely not. Not to trivialize. And, 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 and you know, you're absolutely right, because someone did point this out, that we shouldn't trivialize the Palestinian issue. Yeah. But as a Palestinian, Muhammad Hadib, he said, look, this makes sense. Because the fact is, if you're, if you're you know, in Gaza, in, in, in these, in, you've done protests on this, you know this. Mm. The killing and all, all of this uh, damage that's being done. At least with your family, you know they're dead or alive. At least the Palestinian children are being raised as atheists. There is a different level of oppression happening in Chinese-occupied East Turkestan that actually makes other forms of oppression, which are horrible, look more timid. I think that's the most well, extremely uh, worrying uh, thing uh, about Hifz al Din is Muqaddam ala Hifz al Nafs, which uh, the, in, in the, in the Maqas of Sharia, there are five things that Sharia came to protect. The number one is Hifz al Din, the yep. protection of religion. Then it's the, the, the protection of one's own self and human beings. So if we see a situation where people's deen is being uh, changed forcibly, mm -hmm. they're talking about compulsion and religion, talk about Islamic tropes and oriented tropes. They're doing it. They're doing. They're forcing people out yes. of a religion. We're seeing that. Then that must be prioritized. Yeah. That must be prioritized. And I just wanted to add something. The numbers that we have in the Uyghur tribunal, which is taking place this weekend, mm. they're going to give their verdict in December. Some of the academics. They're talking about hundreds of thousands of children have been removed from their parents while their parents are alive, and they're being socialized into this atheist ideology. So it's not just to do with it's not a, a joke. few hundred. It's not a joke. And if you if you extrapolate yeah, yeah. that, that means and th this is not overhyping the situation. There'll be nobody to say La ilaha illallah in East Turkestan in the next 50 years, if this continues. Like this is what they are planning, to eradicate Islam from its very root, but they have their plans and Allah has his plans. Yes. And this is how we have to get involved. We're talking about missionary work, we're talking about apologetics, we're talking about going to convert people and all that stuff, and people are being forcibly, and we can change it. And so if we can't change that then we haven't done our jobs like you said it's fart it has to be fart yes. on the ummah and who would be most qualified and advantageous in an advantageous position to do so except for as you mentioned the people who have the most freedom we have the most freedom yes, to do yes, these yes. things than any muslims yes. in the whole wide world yeah this is yes, the truth yes, so it's yes, upon yes. us it is really upon and us yes and and uh, look uh, uh, this is not just the, the uyghur uh, tragedy uyghur genocide uyghur issue it's as uh, uh, in, uh, I, I outlined in my book, it's all Islamic issue. Yes. Mm. Because uh, we are just frontier, front gate, yes. you know, uh, to stop them there. Killa. Because we have the knowledge, we have the experience, we paid, you know, a lot of uh, uh, lives mm. to get the knowledge, how they, they deal with them. If they, you know, get... Uh, eradicated East Turkestan, 
and they will, you know, will be in Central Asia. Mm. And uh, this is the every Islamic country's issue. You, um, um, I'm, I'm, uh, it's a so big issue. I'm outlined in this book. I ask every uh, uh, responsible Muslim brothers look around the him in his country where he is or she is. Look what the Chinese government or Chinese business people or Chinese so-called investors doing there. They will find out. This is this is the the the, the forced labor not staying in in, in in Turkestan. They build them already in Africa, thousands and thousands of uh, fabrics. Right now they are paying for the people there to working you know minimum wage. Few years later, they will you know cooperate with their military dictators. Tell them bring people from the prisons, let them work for free. They will bring for the prison to work for free. If the prison is there, they will you know uh, make a new law. Put the uh, young people in the prison, let them do, uh, bring to the forced labor. This forced labor issue already almost in Africa. Uh, I can, you know, uh, <laughs> mention in this book some 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 the name of the country, some mm -hmm. politicians, and uh, this is this Uyghur tragedy. Uh, I am asking every uh, my my brothers and sisters, yes. not just as a Uyghur issue or Uyghur uh, problem it's or Muslim. Uyghur Uyghur. It's their own problem, their so, country's problem. Yes. So, you know, Sheikh Idris said something which is very important. Yes. This is first and foremost definitely a Muslim issue. Yeah. However, it's going to affect non-Muslims. It's going to affect, like you said, Africa. Um, it's going to affect Latin America. It's going to affect other things. So even though because we are Muslims and we are united and Ummah is one body, we are speaking up. But for anybody who's watching this and if you're not Muslim, this is going to affect everybody. You know, this next couple of decades... Uh, what's happening to the t Tibetans, what's actually happened to the Mongols in Inner Mongolia. So, uh, you know, it's very important that if we stand together, the Mongols, the Tibetans, the Uyghurs, the Muslims, the, the Africans, the Latinos, because collectively they cannot take us all on. Um, I think uh, just to end upon, we should speak about the World Uyghur Congress, sorry, the, the, the Uyghur Tribunal taking place uh, this weekend. And uh, you're going to be giving a testimony there, so inshallah. if you can explain about that, please. Yes, uh, inshallah, uh, it will be in the uh, Uyghur tribunal. There will be a victim witness. The uh, 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 the world had the chance, you know, to hear from first hand from the victims uh, what they went through from this uh, Uyghur genocide and the, 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 the Chinese war on Islam, and additionally. Uh, there will uh, many experts from a variety aspects uh, giving their, their testimony in this genocide. And uh, uh, I uh, was asked about the uh, Chinese buying uh, Muslim country's silence and uh, how uh, they in fact uh, impact on Uyghur genocide. And uh, I, I'll give my testimony there. Uh, already uh, sent this, uh, submitted the report to them. Mm. Uh, it's. Uh, I'm not happy, you know. I, 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 I'll give my omission. I'm not happy to give this testimony uh, how the China bought Islamic countries' silence. I'm not happy to talk about this because it hurt me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a Muslim. I'm a one of this Ummah. And the, uh, the, the front of the world, you know, to tell, look, China invested there this money, but this military guys or, you know, corrupted this politician, or bought this media, and uh, this uh, uh, media outline just, uh, you know, bring the news uh, from China as a miracle. They're not talking about the Uyghur issue. They're deporting Uyghur students and the Uyghur uh, business people to the China, to concentration camp. It's not uh, what I enjoy to talk about it. Mm -hmm. It hurts me as, as, as a witness. I'm very nervous, brother, as to, to talk about this issue. Uh, I wish, you know, at least, uh, that that uh, not the case. That uh, not the case. As a uh, one ummah, we saw you know, as you said before, as a Muslim ummah, we you know, a last piece by piece, Andalusian, you know, look, uh, yeah, Indian, uh, Indonesia, you know, and Central, everywhere, yeah, Balkan, Kafkas, you know, everywhere. We we have of course priority every country, but as a ummah, at least what we can do is what I say. Yeah, Inform fellow brothers. Yes, that's true. And the Mecca dua. That's at least what we can do. Mm -hmm. it.
that can uh, do everybody. Allah That's the minimum. And also November the twelfth is the, is the protest. Yes. It's been a pleasure, Allah, having you. And uh, thank you, brother, for giving us this chance. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Thank you.